Here I have four particles. One, two, three, four. And we'll go through them one at a time. Let's imagine they all have the same speed. 1.00 times 10 to the sixth meters per second. And they are all in a magnetic field, and the magnetic field is pointing this way with a magnitude of 1.00 times 10 to the minus 3 Tesla. Let's figure out the force on each one. So first, the number one, first one, that is a proton. What is the magnitude of the force? Remember, magnitude is F equals QVB sine theta. But even before we put the other numbers in, what's the force going to be on this one? Can you think? It's going to be zero. Why? Because what is theta for this first particle? Theta is zero. Sine of zero is zero. So the force for the first one is zero. Let's go on to number two. What's the force on this uh, particle? Again, it's a proton. The magnitude of the force is QVB sine theta, magnitude Q. So what's the magnitude of the charge of a proton? It's one electrostatic unit. So that will be 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19th coulombs. That's Q times V. What is V? 1 times 10 to the 6th. 1 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. V, V is 1 times 10 to the minus 3. 1 times 10 to the minus 3 Tesla sine theta. Now what's theta? Well, what we have is right here, that angle is 60 degrees. What is theta? It is not 60 degrees. Remember, what is theta? <coughs> How is theta defined? Theta is defined as the angle between V and B. B is upward. So that angle is theta, which is what? It's 90 minus 60. Theta in this problem is actually 30 degrees. We have to remember how theta is defined. In order to use an equation, you have to remember how every term in that equation is defined. And in this case, theta, the theta we want, is 30 degrees. That was a bit of a tricky one, wasn't it? Would I do that to you on a quiz or an exam? Yes, of course I would. Very good. You've got to make sure. Keep those things in mind. Remember what theta means. Theta is the angle between V and B. Multiply that all out, and what do we get? We get the magnitude of that force is 8 times 10 to the minus 17. And what are the units? Coulomb meter Tesla per second. What is a Coulomb meter Tesla per second? I have no idea either. Uh, but I do know it's the standard SI unit for force, and that would be a Newton. There we go. What's the direction? Let's apply our right-hand rule. We have V, B, out of the page. So the force would be out of the page. There we go. There's the force for number two. What about number three? F equals QVB sine theta. Now, in this case, it's an electron. Remember, the charge of an electron is negative one electrostatic unit. So, what's the force? Well, remember, the force is the magnitude of Q. So, again, we have 1 times 10 to the 6th, 1.60. You could put in 1.602 for 4 sig figs. 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. QV, V again, 1 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. QVB, again, 1 times 10 to the minus 3 Tesla, sine theta. What's theta in this case? The angle between V and B, 45 degrees. 45 degrees. Multiply that out, and we find that F is equal to, what do we get? I have to go to the next page. 1.13 times 10 to the minus 16, and again, the units are newtons. What's the direction? We've got B, B, my palm points out of the page, but it is an electron, a negative charge, so the force is into the page. I really should put a little negative sign there so that you don't think it is a positive electron. There actually is such a thing as a positive electron. It's called a positron. So, 
we wanted that to be actually an electron with a negative charge. So the force is into the page. What about the last one? Here we have a particle that it's very, very important for you to remember. This is called an alpha particle. And we will see alpha particles uh, every now and then. And it's very important for you to remember what they are. An alpha particle is a helium nucleus. Do you know what's in a helium nucleus? There are four particles, two protons and two neutrons. So what's the charge of a helium nucleus? Well, it's the charge of two protons. It's two electrostatic units. It's a positively charged particle, and the charge is plus two electrostatic units. So sometimes this is written as HE plus plus. Keep that in mind. An alpha particle is a very common particle, and we'll see that um, off and on every now and then. So let's figure out what's the force. We have F equals Q, which is two electrostatic units. So two times 1.60 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. V, again, one times 10 to the sixth meters per second. B, one times 10 to the minus three Tesla sign, and what is theta in this case? Well, theta is at 60 degrees, so sine 60 degrees. Multiply that out, and what do we get? We get a force of 2.77 times 10 to the minus 16. Again, Newtons. What's the direction for that force? V B, the alpha, is a positive particle, so the force is out of the page, out of the board. Very, very good. What I'd like to do now is take a look at another calculation for a, a particle moving in a magnetic field, and let's see if we can figure out what it's going to do. Not just what's the force, but what's going to happen to its motion. Let's imagine that we have a uniform magnetic field pointing into the board. So here's our magnetic field, and we'll assume it points into the board. Let's imagine also that we have a positive charge particle that is moving with a velocity in that direction. What's going to happen to this particle? Well, we've got a velocity upward, magnetic field in, so we've got V, B, VB, we're going to have a force that points on the charge to the left. So what's it going to do? If there's a force on the charge pushing it to the left, it's going to accelerate to the left. So what's the motion going to look like? It's going to be going upward and then accelerate to the left. Let's imagine it comes over here and is now going in that direction. Now what's the direction of the force? Well, we've got V, B, the force is going to be down this way. What's it going to do? Well, it's going to accelerate down that way. It's going to accelerate like that. Let's imagine it comes over here, and now it's going that way. What's the force going to be? V, B, the force is that way. What's it going to do? It's going to accelerate that way. So it's going to move around like that. Let's imagine it's over here and it's going that way. What's going to happen? Well, now the force is V, B. It's going to be up this way. It's going to accelerate around that way. And now let's imagine it's going that way. You can see the force is going to point this way, what's it going to do? It's going to accelerate around like that. Well, what's going to happen? It's going to go around in a circle. The force is always perpendicular to the velocity. The force always points towards the center of the circle. What kind of a force is that? Think back to physics 1111. That is a centripetal force. The magnetic force acting on the charge will be a centripetal force moving it around in a circle. Well, let's see if we can figure out what is this circle going to look like. If we have a centripetal force 
that's equal to what? The, the uh, force acting on the charge is the magnetic force, which is QVB sine theta. Let's, for the sake of simplicity, assume we have a positive charge, so it's just Q, we don't have to worry about the magnitude of Q. And also, let's imagine that our velocity is perpendicular to our magnetic field. So we'll assume those are at 90 degrees. Sine of 90 is 1. So what's the force? The force is QVB sine 90 is 1. That is going to act as our centripetal force. What is the centripetal force? Do you remember that back from 1111? That was the mass times the centripetal acceleration. The centripetal acceleration was v squared over r. So the centripetal force is mv squared over r. So this equals mv squared over r. Let's solve for v. We'll divide both sides by v, multiply by r, divide by m. What do we have? We've got mv squared divided by v equals multiply by r, r q b, and then we're going to divide by m, and what do we have? We've got one of the v's cancel. We have v equals q r b over m. There we go. Let me check, make sure I didn't make a mistake. Yep, there we go. Excellent. That tells us the speed of the particle in terms of the radius, or we can solve for the radius in terms of the velocity. We can multiply by m, divide by q over v, r equals m v over q b. That tells us the radius of the circle in terms of the mass, the velocity, the charge, and the magnetic field. This result is actually used in a mass spectrometer where a charge is sent into a magnetic field and then by looking at how the, the charge moves through the magnetic field, what's the radius of motion, you can actually determine things like the mass per charge uh, ratio and you can determine what kind of material the, the um, uh, elements are made of and things like that. It's a way of, of separating out a, uh, the uh, chemical composition of a particular substance. Very good, very good, excellent. Well, next time we'll continue with our study of the magnetic field and we'll look at how other things are affected by the magnetic field. For example, what about groups of moving charges like currents? Well, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.